beauty face mode selected. So I thought, without uh, looking in the the mirror or trying to make any attempts to make myself presentable, I would make a quick video. You know, capture the spirit of the the moment, the place, the creature that I am. <sighs> So I'm going to read a, a poem in a moment, a poem that I just wrote, a poem, because when you just write things, there's some rhyming words in it, but, you know, it's not a, it's not a polished stone, it's not a pretty polished stone. I wanted to say that, uh, well, I actually wanted to say that I, the clothes I'm wearing I haven't, haven't washed for like a couple of weeks. Um, and that I think a lot. I spend a lot of time thinking, going round and round. There's some hand actions to help you relate and understand what I'm saying. Stuff going round and round my head. Um, so there are certain um, aspects. If I was sad at the moment, if I was fucking miserable, um, the fact that I haven't, I'm not particularly looking after my personal hygiene to like a high level doesn't smell bad to me and and the fact that I'm like thinking a lot about is might be like might be considered I don't know I, one of the things I was thinking earlier was that um, you know, I've, I've probably got a little bit of Tourette syndrome, a touch of like OCD, a, a bit of um, manic depression. Manic depression? Is that what they call it? Bipolar? Manic depression, yeah. So I definitely don't have just depression. I've got, you know, balance. It's all balance. Um, but the, I would personally, you know, this is why I like the term diagnosis rather than diagnosis like the doctor gives you. A diagnosis, that's like dire, as in it couldn't be worse. And gnosis, as in um, knowing, knowledge, or that particular kind of knowing that is related to um, knowing oneself, which you'd think would be the fucking easiest thing to... No, see, it is that's what you are it, but somehow there's some fucking tricksy uh, aspects to it. So yeah, so I have I don't have diagnoses. In fact, I don't. I've never, I've I've I've, I've quite narrowly managed to avoid going to the hospital once upon a time, but um, and I, I've managed to mostly it has impacted my life at various. Points. My own head has impacted my life at various points. My feelings have been... But yeah, I feel a bit better since some stuff happened earlier this year and I won't go into it now. I'm going to go into it at some point. Um, and so... I know that diagnoses can be helpful to help us get a handle on certain ways we are. Like it was helpful for me to read all that highly sensitive person stuff realised that I was um, sensitive and that that was part of being an artist and stuff um, and so it makes you more susceptible to trauma, being traumatised um, which is not about what someone else thinks is traumatic, it's about what happens to affect you traumatically um, Anyway, so one of the things I was going to say in my advice to anyone who is mad is um, just to fucking be an artist or a poet because that's basically probably is what you are, something like that. And uh, and ever once once you're a once you're a artist. By the way, no one says I'm an artist. No one pays me fucking money for my work or does anything like that. I say I'm an artist. I say I'm a poet. Um, and luckily, sometimes people do seem to agree with me. But that's the kind of 
fucking thing you have to do, it, that changes the context of what you are then. You're no longer, your suffering then has uh, value. It's part of your character. You know, you're just a nice, good old eccentric English person then. It takes some work, but that's basically, I, I think maybe that's kind of what the thing was behind occupational therapy or art therapy. But um, it just tends to be like sat in a room like, scribbling on paper which is nice and cutting things out which is nice that is kind of what art is but it's uh it's got this whole like um deeper bit that has to do with the um, how you relate to yourself and your um narratives and stuff the tour stories stories Fuck off. um that you tell yourself all right anyway so now i'm going to read this poem now that i've um really you know explicit Complicated myself and made myself very well understood. So the the first sentence of this I got when I was picking up horse shit in the fields, which is a wonderful job. I'll talk a lot about shit some other time because it's very important to me and I do mention it quite a lot and maybe that maybe I should explain why. Anyway, this one isn't about shit, it's about wizards. <laughs> Ye all infringe upon Gandalf territory. But he's coming back to make a stand here and now for magic land. Here and now. Poor old wizard with his tricks stolen by technology. Left droning on about the astral plane. It's hard to explain. And ravenous materialism, trying to explain imagination away, simulate the perspective of the great subject, nature. But in the process, making every nothing a thing. There is no objectively speaking, screameth the wizard. Firing eyes in triangles for you to not argue with slash against slash for long, long have we known magic's home is in the heart of the head. The fucking twisty guts of the brain mine, labyrinthine mind. So many ways of seeing through things, objects, every solid surface, a metaphorical door to magic, literally. Poor old romantic poet talk. With your sentiments reduced to feelings, out of touchy feel e with reality. Hard, cold gnash of machine teeth teaching you the meaning of life is survival. And love, the not so great lie. Dissolving in the acid bath of my curiosity. The sludgy chemistry of your hopeful bones. Poor, tired, old organism. Having to eat and shit and breathe on demand like some soft, soggy ro ro robot. Time crying out your eyes like steam, rainbows seen by the truly free, the ever hungry ghost gods of eternity. Wait, hungry for what? Get off, get off, ye great alien insect milker of woo men. Stop drinking my experience. Poor old shaman, voice in the great wilderhead of nature, saying, yes, okay, chop, 
Chop, chop me up. Which doctor wants to be my bones? Care to examine the bumps on my cavernous dome of the night sky, my starry-eyed little creator of ages? Who wants to try making a science of my perspective? I have dizzying phenomenologies to infinity. Who wants to rearrange my veins into geometric shapes to reveal the great tea tree of ontology, according to which eternity circulates and traffic lights work? Who among ye shall make light work of these eyes of mine? You? Poor old Connor. Misty physicist to whom all things are precisely see-through to the scale held in front slash behind slash besides. Oh, where did I leave the ruler? It was, it was there last time I looked. Poor king, old king, doing the rounds with my spiral crown among the emperor's new politicians. Poor old city of my tribal, tree-faring intestines, too intense to live in, gabbling like bacteria about what last got let in, the great glass walls of yon human asylum. Poor old artist of my heart, starving, trying to eat the golden phrases of old, all flesh is grass. All dancing in grass skirts on the city's outskirts where performance art becomes agriculture. Poor old hairy culture gardener with dirt under your funger snails and only flowers to talk to. Mmm, this one is peppery. Everyone must eat, says the spaceship city, but you cannot pay for it with feelings or pretty pictures, sucking black gold out your bottom while you double checkmate the spread eagle sheets ship is poor demented old wizard who never did make enough sense to satisfy the most demanding audience of all. The mirrored knife which slice, slice, slice the invisible or top who plots against you, adjusts his maps after every mini blood volcano erupts, coordinates the cross to zero in on your empty promise, which somehow becomes your self-sacrifice, your death, to make it real. Poor old divided liver of lives, poor old cosmic laugher at games, poor old player with the power of names. Trying to tell me I don't know what rich means, in the sense you intend it, with that glint of hoolite upon your sunny, sweaty, wildly gesticulating face. Poor old wizard, poor old tramp, old thing in the dustbin. What are you trying to say? That you have no complaints? Sorry what? That I will be late for work? And you were only playing? Okay, now our imaginary friend with the bowler hat and briefcase has gone. Let us consider the kindest way to reveal to him that he whiz but my business end. And since we are all sated again, from this brief plateau of comfort, let us contemplate the changes to make when we put stitch, waggle and twitch the old thing back together again. Should we still leave off the unincludable bit, yeah? So that's it. Don't know if you'll understand it all, but I try. I tried my best.